picking some strawberries on a warm summer day, when suddenly you hear When your friend cries out in agony, what do you do? After listening to my speech, you as the listeners will be able to identify Florida's six venomous snakes. And be able to identify ways to better protect yourself against the possibilities of being bitten. In my audience analysis, half of you were able to tell me how many venomous species were in Florida. Florida has actually 40 species of snakes, which only six are venomous. While living in Florida, you are at risk of the possibility of being a snake bite victim. Even if you're planning on moving out of state at a later date, the first day that you will be learning in this presentation can be taken with you anywhere you go. The first three snakes that I will be presenting to you are the commonly referred to rattlesnakes. The first is the most common diamondback rattlesnake. This is a large, heavy-bodied snake with large brown to black diamonds bordered by tan down its back. The tail is usually brownish to gray and the, down towards the tail, the tail the diamonds break off into more of a banding pattern. Of course, it has its rattles, and the majority of our venomous snakes, I say majority because there is one that does not follow the criteria of a venomous snake. It has a three categories, three categories for identification. One is keeling scales, which is defined as dull, no claws, scales with raised, a raised ridge running lengthwise to diffuse light. A spade-shaped head and cat-like pupils. Diamondbacks can be found in singular, singularly or in large groups. Next, we're going to go to the timber rattler. This is also a large bodied snake with a reddish brown stripe running down the center of its back, disrupted by large black chevron shaped criss cross banding its pinkish gray to tan body. The tail is usually a uniform black. And the head sometimes has a large dark diagonal line through it. This species does also fall into the category with the three classifications of diamond-shaped head, keel, I'm sorry, spade-shaped head, keeled scales, and cat-like eyes. Next is the smallest rattlesnake, the dusky pygmy. The dusky pygmy is a small but thick snake. It is dark to light gray with latitudinal rows of black to charcoal with transferal blotches of reddish brown stripes down the middle of the back and dark spots down the sidelines. This is an extremely tiny snake. It only grows to 12 to 24 inches. And after con a brief conversation with the photographer, I learned that the lens cap you see there is a standard 52 millimeter lens cap, which is this big. Next, we're gonna go on to our 
snakes that do not have rattles. So our next one is the southern copperhead. This is a stout bodied snake with a light brown to gray cross bands alternating patterns to a reddish brown criss cross bands. Construction along the backbone of a hourglass configuration. Southern copperheads sometimes have a pinkish hue to them. The copperhead has the common venomous species classifications of the spade-shaped head, cat-like eyes, and keeled scales. It does not have a rattle, so you will not hear it. Next is the Florida cottonmouth. The Florida cottonmouth is in the family of a copperhead, so juveniles are often misidentified as a copperhead. Its body is usually a reddish brown to dark gray brown striped. And the older uh, individuals are usually more of a solid black. And the cottonmouth gets its nickname that when it is threatened, it sits itself up and opens its mouth, revealing its cottony white mouth. The water moccasin has also got its usual three classifications of a keeled scales, cat-like eyes, and spade-shaped head. Finally, the sixth snake is the eastern coral snake. This is a ring-bodied snake, and it is fairly small. It is striped black, yellow, and red. Narrow yellow rings are separated by wider black, red and black rings. The rings are continuous around the body, and it does not fall into the categories of a usual venomous snake. It has a rounded head, as you can see here, it has round pupils and smooth scales. Now that we have talked about the identifiers of the snakes, I believe you should know where I've received this information. I've received this information from the University of Florida's Herpetology Department, as well as personal references. I grew up here in Florida. My parents took me camping a lot. I mean, every weekend, all summer. <laughs> so, next. Your friend's been bitten. What do we do? First off, move away from the snake. Common sense, right? Next, we're going to want to call 911. And note the description of the snake. Secondly, we're going to keep the person calm because with proper medical treatment, they are going to be okay. More people in the United States die of a bee sting than a snake bite. This is according to Adam. The sorry. American Medical American Demographical Oh my gosh, I can't remember, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> American Demographical Academic Community. If the area begins to swell or change colors, you're gonna want to note the time and the affected area. And if you can, do this on their skin by simply drawing a line around the area. 
as well as monitor the vital signs. Okay. As, as you have learned in this presentation, that you can, so the, sorry, you can identify the six species. There are ways to help yourself once you have been bitten and better understand that you can seek help. And hopefully you will be able to understand that it is okay to go out there and try new things. 